Hello Galaxy, I'm Chris Perillo, here to talk about iPhone reviews, specifically iPhone 10 reviews. You're probably going to be reading or watching or listening to more than 10 iPhone 10 reviews, as well you should. You should definitely get your information from a variety of sources, and I hope you're not just listening to me. You should listen to a great many people with various perspectives and backgrounds. I did want to talk about a few things uh, that I always keep in mind, or would usually keep in mind, as I am experiencing a review, and I tend to see a lot of them, especially if they are related to a product or a service that I'm potentially interested in. I'm absolutely not interested in the iPhone 10. however, I recognize that many people still are and likely will be, and will never hear me talk about anything as I've been talking about for the past N days, specifically in relation to an iPhone 10. So, I'm getting this stuff out now and cranking it out at certain lengths, long videos, because you need to know what's going on, or at least I feel I need to tell you what it is that I'm thinking, and the sooner I tell you, the better. I want to help you make a more informed decision, maybe not just for this product, but for anything that I might cover over any span of time. Uh, the first thing I really want you to recognize, especially when it comes to iPhone reviews, and I'm not... Um, I'm not uh, admonishing anybody for taking this path. I'm not uh, criticizing them outright. I'm not suggesting that there may be a better way because of the conundrum they find themselves in. But in most cases, it is my belief, and I'm not the only one to assert this, based on history and based on certain experiences, the people who get to review an iPhone are typically in Apple's good graces for a lot of different reasons. Um, if you want to stay in Apple's good graces, you kinda have to play ball. And that means sometimes honesty's on the line. Sometimes integrity's on the line. Now, it doesn't mean that the reviews they're doing are sponsored. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to be honest in, in delivering a, a, a review. I'm not, like I said, I'm not accusing anybody of that because I, I'm not them. I'm just saying you have to recognize that more often than not, losing access to something that is very treasured by someone whose livelihood depends on attention, it's suspect. Especially when you're talking about a company like Apple, which has gotten better over the years. But they're certainly not free willing when it comes to uh, providing review devices. And it's certainly not going to be the case that they're going to continue to give product to, for review, uh, entities or people who are going to be a high risk factor at potentially showing you or demonstrating in one way, shape, or form a shortcoming that may damage their sales. So on one side, you've got a company whose existence is predicated on the idea that they're going to make money through selling product. Offering product for free, not paid, uh, whether or not they have to return the units or not, I'm, I'm not privy to that information. Giving this product, review product, review unit, to a party whose livelihood very well depends on traffic, on content and product that is likely a high-value proposition for all parties involved. You kind of have to see it. And I'm not, again... I'm not saying this is absolutely happening with everybody. That's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the system is set up to not be as open as it could be. Uh, and for that reason and that reason alone, my recommendation for everybody, if you are going to be reading, watching, listening to reviews, is if you are, I would put more weight behind those reviews or reviewers who did not get a review unit. Now, this is not me saying sour grapes. It's not it at all. I'm trying to establish why I believe it is important, especially if the product that I see and the product that apparently thousands of you also see as a potential cluster of floating turd... <laughs> I don't think that a lot of the iPhone 10 reviews are going to be as open. Um, 
if only because I, I, I believe that some of the people who are reviewing iPhones could be afraid of losing access. I, I, I know that. I've been in situations similar to that in the past. So just keep that in mind when you're reading, watching, listening to any review of a product that you may be interested in. And the last thing you want to do, I mean, if you're going to comment, this is actually, I've got my notes, I've got a few of them. Hey, I'm Chris Perillo. Uh, the, uh, 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 the, the thing I wanted to point out is don't accuse someone of being biased. Like just, it's, it, it cheapens your position. If you disagree with them, fine. But if they're speaking from their experience, you can't diminish that. We're all biased. We have a cognitive bias. We and it's unconscious. Like we don't we we don't realize that we have we carry a bias everywhere. That's like accusing someone of being a human being, which by the way is what you want in a reviewer. You want them to be a human being, not a robot. So strike that word from your vocabulary. It's it 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 shows up all the time. It rears its ugly head, and it it doesn't serve to further the conversation at all. Uh, so I'm not accusing anybody of that because it's it's just it's. It's it's incorrect. Um, the the so I'm just gonna kind of start start. <laughs> yeah, this was just the introduction. Uh, start into my notes. Uh, hey, if you want short content, go to Twitter. Okay. Um, some things that that I I, I look for uh, or, or or would be watching for. Does it sound like all the others? That, that's that's what I, I tend to find, especially with iPhone reviews. I can I can think of very few people who have done su such a unique job that it, it just stands out. Like it's it, it's so seemingly formulaic, almost as formulaic as an Apple keynote presentation. Like the cadence is on point with very little deviations uh, in, in in not in an iPhone review outright or an Apple product review, but specifically the the, the uh, typical Apple keynote. No matter where they're holding it. The uh, uh, but 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 the review process it should be personal it, it really should because you're you're reading something and you're you're reading not just about the product but you're reading or you should be listening or reading or watching about someone's experience with the product not just the visuals of what it looks like and amazing effects and and, and, and zoom ins and cry you know like oh that looks it's stellar and it keeps your attention but man listen to what they're saying does it sound like everybody else does it sound so cookie cutter? Right? Are they? That, that's that's one thing. Um, there are rare exceptions to that rule, by the way. Rare. You can find unique voices out there, um, but you can't always count on them to to, to be there every time. Uh, is it is it is it reading from a spec sheet? This is actually not a note, but I just recognize this. Is it just a spec sheet? That's like 99% of the damn reviews out there. You can read a website unless you you can't. At which point you could watch the Apple Keynote presentation. You have the talking points. That is not going to help you. If they simply just regurgitate from a, 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 a sheet of paper their talking points, it is a it is literally a worthless review. It has wasted your time. And that is like, I swear, and this isn't just for, for iPhone reviews or iOS reviews or, 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 or Apple reviews. That is 99% of the quote-unquote reviews that I see they're not they're just they're talking about the product they're not reviewing it they're rattling off specs it, it, at that point you you you, you kind of have to tune that out because they're not either they haven't used the product or worse yet and this is this is also a big concern of mine they have not used the product enough you know in in recent years especially when i get something new and i don't get I, I honestly, I don't get a lot of review units. I don't necessarily ask for them. Uh, but, you know, when I have an opportunity to look at something that I know other people or a great amount of people are interested in, yeah, I want to take a look. I don't like cranking out reviews in one week time, two week time. I would rather wait and use the product for a month before I talk about it because I feel it does the product justice instead of just, okay, on to the next product. Okay, on to the next product. Okay, on to the next product. The cycle. Just you constant. It doesn't do anybody any justice, and and I feel that that people, I feel you, wouldn't trust me as much, and that's all I have is is like you know hey you may disagree with me and my opinions and hate the sound of my voice and everything that I've done over all this time, but you know I I try to be a straight shooter I do my best to be a straight shooter and this this is very much a part of it like giving you like my my reactions my beliefs 
uh, in the hopes that it is going to guide you in one way, shape, or form. Um, uh, answers. Uh, do, do, if, do, they, do, they, do they provide answers to the questions that you are specifically hoping to have answered? And, 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 and honestly, at the point where you're able to read a review, you may actually be able to go in and get answers with your hands on uh, any particular device, specifically an iPhone 10, because I think a lot of this, the, the counter, the so-called counter argument to the idea that this is a UX disaster with UI nightmares, you know, coupled with it, um, you have to use the iPhone 10 to understand. No, you don't. No, you don't. Uh, I'm, I'm just, no, you don't. That's, that's not how poor design works. Like, it just isn't. Uh, you may only come up with your own conclusions after you've been using it for for a while. So, it, it, you you know recognize that they have to be able to answer the questions that you're looking for, not just tell you what you want to hear. Uh, or, or 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 worse yet, and this is actually a note I have further down, but I'll mention it now. Uh, reinforce your purchasing decision. That's a biggie. That's tough. It's hard. It's hard to spend. Well. A thousand, two thousand dollars on a phone system, um, or I'm sorry, a pocket computer system, the iPhone 10, and, and and be told that you may have made a mistake. You don't want to hear that. No one wants to hear that about anything that they bought. But that's all the more reason that you need to be listening to dissenting opinions, because this is kind of a big wad of cash for most people. I, I am the 99%. People don't know that. I, I'm not the 1%. Uh, I don't even know if that's a saying anymore. But uh, I, I, that shows you how old I am. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fab. Kids say that these days? I'm on fleek? Is that a thing? Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, here's a question that, that I would want a, a good review to answer. Does function follow form or vice versa? And this is a biggie. Um, because when we're talking about these uh, critical devices, you, you're going to be using this device, not just as a phone. This is, this is everything. It, it, I, I'll tell you this. My smartphone is my primary computer. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't like having a lot of computers around me. I don't want a lot of computers. This is my primary computer. More often than not, is the phone that I have on me. It's my primary camera. It's my communications device. It's, it's on me more often than anything. Uh, but the question I have from a reviewer: Does function follow form or vice versa? With Apple devices specifically, and with the iPhone 10 even more specific, because. The way I see it, and, and this this was illustrated in a tweet that I'll link to. Um, actually, let me see if I can if I can find it. Does function follow form, or does form follow function? Uh, so this is uh, Bob Burrow, and he has tweeted. He's tweeted a lot. Um, and let's see if I can. Oh gosh, maybe I don't have the tweet. Oh no, <laughs> I thought I did. I apologize. He was put. He was. He's actually retweeted me saying that I get it. By the way. Former Apple employee, apparently, on an iPhone team. Um, if I can find it, I'll pull it up. He's got quite a few good threads. you got to follow him on Twitter. Uh, but I, I can't seem to find it. He had a, a screenshot. Ah, I found it. Okay, okay, okay. This is the example. So this was a, three days ago. This is the, the like the first iPhone right there. You see how the bar is, is just melting away? Like the, the, the software bar, not a hardware bar, melting away, and the content just kind of floats out there on top of it? Right now, com compare and contrast that to this. Which which is more elegant? If, in, and some people just don't have an answer. This is this is just it's I guess subjective, but which looks to be more seamless? Which one has the device melt away into the background? I feel like I'm a, a, the eye doctor. One or two, three or four. <laughs> I swear, half the time the eye doctors they they just like give you the same thing and they just say different numbers or letters anyway. Uh, but this this to me got me thinking like form no longer follows function. With with the iPhone 10, form does not follow function. It's the opposite. Like the iPhone 10 is literally in every way, shape, and form like the opposite of what drew me to the iPhone. 
and, and when, when, when form follows function and the marketing department takes charge of product, you get something like the iPhone 10. When it's designed by committee, you get something like the iPhone 10. Ah. Uh, when the features are made to wrap around the hardware, it's, it, it's the function, right? You want it to just be seamless and work together. You've got the hardware. The hardware's got to sing in harmony with the software. And when it doesn't, you've got a mess. You, you, you've got, a, a, you know, a, just an inelegant solution. It works. It just works. It does. It does just work. There's no doubt about that, B but since when was that good enough? Sounds like somebody, uh, another company's mantra to me. It's just good enough. So have them answer that question or look for the, listen for that question. If, do they answer that question? Does function follow form? Does it just work like seamlessly? Like the hardware bends around the feature. The, the, the design of the product bends around the feature, not the other way around. Uh, another biggie for me, and this is for beyond iPhone 10, but I think this is also critical. Are they only focused on the hardware? Back to the spec sheet, man. Is, is it all just about the hardware? That that's 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 the average gadget review. Doesn't help at all because you know hardware without software is just a slab of nothing. You you got to hear what they say about the software. What are they saying? And and then and then moreover, when they are talking about the software. What's new? Like, and not just on the, on the spec sheet. What else has changed? Very few people do this. I mean, like, like fundamental, like, small changes that aren't necessarily listed on the spec sheet. That'll tell you how much they've been paying attention. Uh, or specifically, what hasn't changed in software. Hardware is easy to tell. Like, oh, yeah, it's obviously, it's different, right? But what's changed in software? If they don't even mention software, if they gloss over that, uh, to me, it's a red flag. Because it tells me that they're only paying attention to the hardware and they don't recognize the software's function for the hardware. And for an iOS device and any Apple device, it's a marriage of the two. It's experience. It just speaks to that kind of experience. And that's, that's really what it boils down to, the experience, right? That's not something you can't find. You, you, it's not readily found apart from having experience with the device. Uh, do they gloss over... Uh, the iOS software inconsistencies and and grade the software beyond the hardware. Um, having used various iterations of iOS since seven, um, it things have gotten better and things have gotten worse, like progressively. Like two steps forward is like three steps back. Um, the seemingly they fix one thing, but then two more fires crop up in its place. Uh, do, do, do they mention uh, layout inconsistencies? Do they uh, do they mention animation jank? Do they mention um, uh, other other problems? And, and, and they may be able to write them off as, well, this is a, a, a major revision. We'll likely see fixes with coming revisions. But here's the thing. That repeats itself with every cycle. That's not how it should work. Like, that's that's progression with regression. And that is effectively what iOS has been since iOS 7. Uh, and certainly iOS 11... It, it, it's it, it works, but man, it's 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 age is starting to show, big time. Um, you know that that was the one thing I, I I had been hoping for with with a new iPhone was actually a new platform with you know uh, you know a, a focus on uh, not just pr CPU performance but software performance. It hasn't happened. I'm not I'm done holding my breath. Um, are they focused only on the latest label? Like the latest, right? This is this is the latest. It is it is the latest, but that doesn't mean anything uh at all. It, it's it's true. Like empirically, it is one of the latest. But you know, how does this if they do mention the latest, if they do dive into the 10, how does it then compare with its contemporaries, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus? Because I believe that Apple's sidelining them. Uh, intentionally or unintentionally, I believe they're going to push to the, I think they're going to, this is, I, I, I know, I have no insider information. I'm saying just based on their marketing materials and just from what I'm hearing and seeing, you know, like as I'm, I'm watching, you know, social streams, like eight and the eight plus are getting sidelined in a big way. And I'm already seeing some of this from, uh, from 
blogs, uh, the blogosphere, in, 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 in certain tweets, uh, eff effectively ignoring... Uh, the other latest devices in the array. Like, they've been completely written off. And, and I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's, it's, I don't think it's fair to the value of what those iPhones still provide to someone who doesn't see them because Apple's not exactly, you know, saying they don't exist. But I think most of their marketing push is going to be on the 10. And, and, and is the reviewer so focused on that that they lose sight of what... Um, what that greater value is in the chain of value that Apple has provided in this latest series of releases. Um, if they do photo and video comparisons, and they should, these are our primary cameras, let's be honest, uh, for, for the most part. Some of us do not carry around uh, extra uh, camera equipment or DSLRs. Uh, if they're going to do photo and video comparisons, I'm, I am interested in... Um, Seeing how they compare with, let's say, uh, you know, d d like uh, contemporary devices from other manufacturers, but specifically, how do they compare to previous generation iPhones? Uh, and that's something that I don't know if, if many reviewers necessarily do. Like, how does an iPhone 8 Plus compare not just to an 8 in its range, but how does it compare with a 7 Plus and, and a 7 and a 6 Plus and a 6S, like, or 6S Plus and a 6S? How, how, how does that latest photo compare? In, in a variety of situations, low light, high light, you know, HDR, non-HDR, I mean, you get, like, you, you want as much dense information as you could possibly get. You're not going to get it likely in a video review. Um, you're not going to get it outright in most reviews. Be, and the reason why I'm saying that is because you're probably, if you're interested in the 10, you're more than likely an existing iPhone customer. Is it worth upgrading what you have to something new? And having had the experience of trying the iPhone 7 Plus camera compared to the, the, the 7 camera, there wasn't, in most situations, there wasn't a difference between the two, even though the 7 Plus camera was allegedly better with the dual camera apparatus and you do digital zoom and all that stuff. But like in terms of most photos that you would need to be taking uh, beyond the, the portrait mode gimmick, uh, the and I still think it's a gimmick, I, I've yet to see a photo that I was impressed by uh, not taken by me, certainly. The uh, 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 the phone that you're on, you want to know if it's going to be that that camera apparatus or cameras are going to be better, like in 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 the way that you can perceive them by your own eyes. Not that you're just told, oh, it's got a different ISP and it's got a you know uh, you know this and that and that. You know, you want to you you got to see it and you got to compare it to the phone that you have, uh, or the, you know, not just to say, you know, blindly, oh, it's going to be better. Because it's it's not always going to be better, even if it's the latest. It doesn't mean it's the greatest. I and honestly, and for a lot of the photos that I, I took when I was doing tests, I felt my iPhone 6s took better photos than the iPhone 7 Plus. I I really did. Uh, you know, in in in, in most of the situation, it shocked me. In fact, I, I I was posting about it in social at the time. I'm like, what's going on here? Like I thought this was supposedly better. So uh, you got to watch for those experiences. Uh, and, and another one, especially in relation to the 10 is, and, and I am trying to keep most of this focus specifically on those looking for the 10 reviews, because I think these are critical questions to answer. Uh, no or little mention of the sensor array. And I, I'm confident. I am more than confident that reviewers, some reviewers, not all are going to gloss over it. I, I really believe that's going to be a problem. They're going to gloss over it. And if they don't talk about it, um, it, no one's going to think about it. It's 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 going to be a, a non-issue, but it will impact usability. It has impacted usability by by its by design. It will impact usability, uh, you, one in one way, shape, or form. But absolutely because of the intrusion, uh, or well, the hardware intrusion with the sensor array, and then the software intrusion with the floating the software little uh, chiclet uh, capsule at the, at the bottom of the screen to indicate that you swipe away to to go back to the home screen. Which, from as I can see from a from from a distance, it looks that it could work well. Uh, parts of the the usability change, the changes in usability could work in the user's benefit. But without mentioning the sensor array specifically or that chiclet outright, I feel it's not it's not a complete review at all. And I, I feel that a lot of people are going to skip over it, whether they do it intentionally or whether they do it out of their own ignorance. Uh, whether they do it because they don't think it's a big deal, and they may even say, I don't think it's a big deal. That's that's their opinion, just like it's my opinion, as well as the opinion of experts. I'm not saying I'm an expert at all. 
the, the it's 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 not it's not a good thing. It is a big deal. Uh, and, and if they don't mention it and, and and not just gloss over it, I would be concerned about the weight of that person's review. Uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not something to be taken lightly. It is it is a dramatic departure, not just from design. Uh, not just from good design, but from from the iPhone outright. And they may just say, well, it's different, but you get used to it. Or it's it's different and, you know, it's it's not a big deal. I, I just, I worry. With all those things combined, like, you just, you just got to worry about that, man. Because a lot of people don't, they don't know it's a problem until they see the problem. It's like some people get mad at me, lightly mad at me when I point out a problem. Because then they can't unsee it. Well, that's my job. If I don't, I don't have that as in my job title. I'm saying if I don't tell you, I'm not doing you any favors. Uh, you know, but but how much? How much do they? How much do they discuss that? How much? And and there have been a few people that have shocked me to this point, like people who are are squarely like you know very 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 entrenched in in Apple and in, in its success, but also honest. And and there have been people who have who've definitely come out right come out and said like this is this is bad um but still don't know their their hands are up in the air their hands are in the air uh or the decisions in the air really uh, about whether or not the the, the 10 is going to be a, a, a demonstrably uh, good product certainly if you're the one who's got to spend money on it uh, you want to know um do they have real world experiences? And, and, and when I'm talking about this again, going back to the idea that it's just a, it's a review that's just rattling off numbers and charts and, and, and generic stuff. What's their real world experience with actually using the product? So, for example, uh, I was uh, uh, doing something here at the, at the desktop uh, today, and I needed to um, I needed to do something on the phone. I can't remember what it was. So I pulled the phone, phone over, and of course, instinctually, you know, rested my finger on uh, Touch ID. It was unlocked. By the time it got to me, I was able to do my thing. Um, actually, I didn't even go through doing my thing. I was like, huh, I wouldn't be able to do that if I had Face ID. It, is, it would it be, it, but what I would have to do instead is I'd have to pull it over, pick it up, wait to identify, swipe up after it's it's recognized me. So I'm saying I want to unlock it. So there's there's a lot more involved. That's muscle memory that can change. I'm not slagging the process of, of like, you know, it's it's worse. It's just, it's different. And that's something that is going to be subjective. If I had, if I kept running into situations where, oh my God, this is not as easy as it used to be. If I did not make mention of that, um, I think I would not be doing you any favors. But I, I'm just saying, I wouldn't be able to do that. And now, granted, if I had a phone with the touch sensor on, on the back, I'd have to pick it up to use it. Or I'd have to unlock with a passcode or whatever. Um, it, it, it's the question of how how much of an inconvenience was it? I'm not expecting much with Face ID. That's the thing is all these new features with the iPhone 10. To me, all the new stuff in the iPhone 10 is like throwing out the baby with the bathwater, because it's just the whole thing is is it's it stinks. Uh, you know, I've already gone into that I, I, before, so I'm not going to go into it right now. Um, how does the screen itself compare to others at the price point? So the big deal, one of the big deals about, well, the big negative deal about the iPhone 10 is specifically the screen from my perspective, but they're making a big deal about the screen. So how does that screen absolutely compare to say, not just an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 8 plus, you know, within their family, but screens from other devices? In manufacturers, specifically like the newer ones, right? How does it compare? Like brightness, uh, like actual real world usability, uh, you know, clarity, sharpness, contrast. I mean, all those things that you would expect. So look for specific OLED comparisons. And then you have to go even deeper because if the screen is the thing that's driving you to an iPhone, like that's that's the thing, it's the screen, it's, the, it's an amazing screen. And that's it then you have to recognize that there there may be other screens that are better. Do I know that? I don't know because I don't have an iPhone 10. I can't compare it, right? Uh, I, I haven't done any comparisons myself. I'm saying that's something that you want a reviewer or would want a reviewer to do, especially if you were interested in a screen uh, or the screen. You know, price points are certainly going to come into play too. Uh, and, then, and then you also have to look even deeper when they're talking about the screen. It's not just screen size measured diagonally. Sorry, dogs. Uh, the, uh, uh, the It's not the screen size measured diagonally. It's the amount of usable screen. Like, how much is actually 
usable, not just visible, right? Like what's usable? Like there are certain safe areas now for content for developers to adhere to, uh, top, bottom, side to side areas. You can't touch, uh, you can't do anything with, those are the safe zones and it's being done. The software is being modified to effectively fit the hardware, but in a, in a way that makes a lot of that not as usable as it could be. Using that space, the space for the screen could be used to much better end if Apple took a different approach with how they're how they're doing this. Uh, I've got uh, I'm working on putting together a set of tweets from uh, developers and, and, and UI and UX and design experts. One of them is specifically talking about how this is really going to add a lot of white space to existing apps. Um, so how well is the screen used for apps? Apps that may have been optimized, default apps, let's say. How is it? How well is it used? Not that it's on, not that the screen's on, not that it's illuminated. How? It, how is it? What's the usable space? What's used? What's not just a waste? And you got to think about that. It's not just the measurement of the screen. That's a spec. What's usable? Not talking about usability right now, but the, what's usable? And then you have to compare it to well, what? What is the usable screen size for an iPhone? Uh, uh, an iPhone eight or an eight plus. Like there's, there's a, there's definitely not much of a difference from the, the numbers that I've seen. I apologize. I don't have the tweet. I can't pull it up. The numbers that I've seen, uh, specifically, and if anybody's got the, the, uh, the link to it, feel free to, to, to post it and I'll clear it out of spam. Um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the amount of usable space is almost the same uh, between the iPhone eight plus and, uh, the, 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 the 10, um, so you got to think about that. It's not just the screen or the components of the screen, which is one thing. It's what's usable. You know, it's not that it just looks good. It's what's, what, why? Like, you know, what's, what's usable about it? Who needs a big screen if you can't use a third of it? I don't know. Bragging rights, I get Marketing? It's a, f <laughs> I can't, what's the, what's the word that Apple uses in their marketing? Like you get all the full, all the screen, the full screen. It's BS. Anybody with sight can tell you it's BS. It's not all screen. Uh, it's, you know what's all screen? Every freaking device you've ever had with a screen. Let's... Oh, man. I remember when Apple's devices marketed themselves. I really do. Uh... So next, usability tests. So, you know, beyond like the real world experiences, like in terms of usability, like how did they feel it performed over company X's product or pre previous iPhones? How, how was it demonstrably better? Not just different for the sake of being different, but how was it just measurably, inarguably better from their experience, from their perspective. So usability tests, I think, are going to be a big play when it comes to the 10, because to me, usability is the only thing in question with the 10. Um, you know, I, 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 I would probably not have as many issues with the 10 as a device. You know, I'd still have, I'd still be largely saying the same things minus the, the, the whole question of usability outright. If I wasn't slagging the hardware component, uh, I'd probably be slagging the software component. Um, because these are issues that I, I feel play into usability. So what usability tests did they run this through? Did they? My guess is more often than not, they didn't. If most reviewers know what usability is, most of them probably couldn't even tell you the difference between UX and UI. And you know what? I may not be an expert. That may not be my professional background, but for the most part, I can grok the difference between UX and UI. Uh, this is not a discussion about that right now. Uh, but speaking of discussion, um, any discussion of usability changes. So this is something that I discovered, and it, this is I've now seen it a few times over. Uh, there, there may be the likelihood that reachability is as a feature is non-existent on this phone. If you use reachability, let's say on your iPhone Seven, it's not going to exist on the same device. Well, I'm sorry, not the same device on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the Ten. Sorry, I'm like numbers are tripping me up. It's not going to exist on the 10. Your reachability may be gone. It, it may, it may no longer, it may no longer exist. So, uh, all right, come here, baby. What do you got, sweetie? 
You want to say hello? Go ahead, say hello. It's not live. <laughs> she just toddled in here. Uh, all right. Can I do this, Jedi? She was being quiet because she knew you were making a video. Oh, thank you. You knew I was making a video. All right. Well, can I continue then? All right. Thank you. Uh, love you. You can join me for these discussions when you're ready. Uh, we don't just do Star Wars videos around here, believe it or not. The, uh, uh, okay, so I mentioned the discussion of software. Um, oh, this is another one that I, I, I'd expect to hear in people who specifically are focused on Apple products. Uh, this, this is something that I, also, that I also saw surfaced in a tweet. If they're not challenging inconsistent human interface guidelines, HIG, and, and what, where I mean by this, like if you wear, if you have an Apple Watch or you've seen any Apple Watch, like it, every bit of software on that screen just melts into the device. Like as far as I'm concerned, like as far as wearables are, are concerned right now, I, I think the Apple Watch is, is close to best in, best in class and what they're about to reveal or unleash with software and the iterative software update with heart monitoring, I think is just beyond stellar if only because cardiovascular disease our atherosclerosis is a, like the number one killer like you know monitoring your heart i think is going to be a huge seller for the apple watch but the human interface guidelines of the apple watch outright are radically different like imagine if apple took the same approach with the human interface guidelines of the iphone 10 as they did with uh, uh the uh, uh with the apple watch like with the apple watch the software just blends in with the iphone 10 it stands out like a sore thumb because of the so-called notch, the sensor array at the top of the screen. So that's something that I feel is uh, is a big challenge to make on a reviewer's part. Like Apple tells developers they have to embrace the notch, but if they have to embrace the notch on the phone, why not embrace you know uh, why 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 did they have to embrace the screen outright on the uh, the Apple Watch? Like, they just seem to be, these human interface guidelines patterns seems to be different. Now, I understand the usability of a watch is radically different from the usability of a phone. But the design of the Apple Watch is to make the technology melt into the technology. It's to make the software melt into the hardware, to make it disappear, to make it look like magic. The iPhone 10 slaps you in the face with software. That, that, that's not what it's supposed to do. That's not what a good device, that's not what a good UX is supposed to do. So the human interface guidelines discrepancy is something that I expect them to absolutely bring up. Uh, I would like to hear Face ID is demonstrably better or more convenient than Touch ID. Uh, I, I have every reason to believe that it's, it's the way to go. I'd have no problem using it at all. I have, uh, uh, you know, little issue with it. I, I think Apple's had the right approach to privacy for all the time, all this time, and I think that's one of the reasons it stands out from the pack. I'll be doing another video on, 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 you know, Android and switching and going in between iOS and Android at some point. But you know, this is something that I think is going to be critical. Uh, how well is it better? Because some people may go to it for Face ID. I don't think a lot of people are going to get the iPhone 10 for Face ID. I think most of the people are going to get uh, an iPhone 10 are specifically doing it as a status symbol and nothing more. Uh, I, I would, uh, um, I would just make sure, and you, you've really got to make your own judgment call on this, uh, a, you know, accurately recognize whether or not they're just not very skilled. I'm sorry, this sounds wrong. Are they skilled? Are they being accurate? Are they being complete? Not just from your perspective, but specifically for the value of the device. Like, are, are they telling you what you want to know? Or are they telling you something new that you can't get anywhere else? Are, do you believe they're being not just reinforcing your beliefs, but do you believe they're being honest? And, and I don't think you can be honest about something without being, you know, uh, effusive. If you're going to be effusive with praise, you also have to look for things to be critical about, unless genuinely you can't find a criticism. That's something that unfortunately is, is, is something that happens frequently. Now, some people have been slagging me, you know, over the past couple of days saying, well, why don't you ever talk about, you know, good things about Apple? Have we, have we met? Like, do you, like, you know, I've been accused of, of, uh, you know, I've been pigeonholed as someone who hates Windows, who hates Microsoft, who hates Apple, who hates iOS, who hates Android, who hates Google, but I've said so many good things about them as well. Like, it's, so, you know, I'm just, th these past few days, it's been pretty hyper-focused on information that I believe, data points that I believe are going to help you and others around you make a more informed decision. Uh... I mentioned don't look for reviews that only justify your purchasing decision. Uh, if if they continue to, if they if they throw out this is just really I, this irks me. If they regurgitate words like amazing, the future, best one yet, 
that I think is, I believe it's inaccurate. Um, that's my perspective, but it also just, it, it's indicative of every single device review I've ever listened to. It's amazing. It's the latest and greatest. It's perfect. It's just this, that, and the other thing. It's just effusive with praise. And I think that's, if they say it's, it's amazing, if they say it's the best iPhone, it's the only iPhone to consider. If they say it's the future, they're regurgitating Apple's uh, uh, talking points. It's, it's something that you've really got to pay attention to because they're only falling, they're, they're falling into line at that point. I'm, not going to call them a sheep. I'm not going to call them biased. It's, it, it degrades the conversation. I'm saying challenge that. I, I don't, oh, do you want, oh, that's what you were looking for, sweetie. There we go. You got it? Can you take it to mommy? Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I wasn't sure if she was looking at that or, sorry. If she was looking at that or Grand Admiral Thrawn. We'll open him soon after this. Uh, so you know, when they talk about amazing and, 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 and the best one, A, I don't think it's the best iPhone. It, it may be one of the latest. I don't believe it's the best iPhone. The best iPhone is the first one, period. End of story. It's the thing that set the world on fire. It was the first iPhone. But here's, here's how I dovetail it, right? Again, it's not about the hardware. It's the software. Apple did amazing things in software that... I never imagined possible on hardware that at the time was lackluster. Like the hardware was horrible. And that's all the reviewers, all all the reviewers, all the nerds, all the geeks looking at it. So oh, it's going to fail. So hardware sucks and it doesn't have this feature and that feature and the other feature. So it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And then the software blew us away. It was the software that won me over to the iPhone. It was the software. It was the software. It was the software. It was the software. It was never the hardware. The iPhone's never been about the hardware. It's great to see incremental improvements, man. But it's always been about the software. Ugh. So if they say it's the best one, I disagree with that. But if they, if they just say that about every product they do, every product they look at, it's amazing. It's this, that, and the other thing, and only the good stuff. Ugh. They're not doing you any favors. Mind you, I'm not a device reviewer. I don't, I'm not someone who necessarily... I don't even like reviewing things, to tell you the truth. So I'm almost done here. Uh, I, I also want them to answer a question who they believe was in charge of this product. And, and I'm going to end it or try to end it on, on this point. Who was in charge of this product? The customer or marketing? Who was in charge? With Apple? With the Apple I knew? Like the Apple that I effectively subscribed to? The Apple that I believed in over all these years? The Apple that no longer exists? The customer designed the product. It was all about the customer. It was customer focused. It, it, it wasn't marketing focused. It wasn't marketing driven. It wasn't spec driven. It wasn't just about what you could do with the product. It was just, it, it was made for the user. Every, everything about it was made with the user in mind. Marketing fell in line. Who made the product? Have your reviewer, and if they don't answer the question, push them for an answer to the question. Who they believe designed the product. Was it marketing or was it the user? And, and if they don't answer, if they don't understand the question, it tells you what kind of reviewer they are. And if, if they do answer the question, just be, be mindful of how they answer the they question the, and how that... They have the car, uh, the car. I drove in the car. You drove in the car? Yeah. Well, well, wow, that was a nice car. Yeah. That was, was really neat. Blue car. With the blue one. Yeah. That's amazing. We'll talk about it soon. Can I finish this up? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's, uh, we'll, we'll talk about driving the blue car. I can't wait. This is very exciting. Um, th there was a, there's a guy and I just, he just came on my radar the other day. Uh, he actually tweeted a video. I would use Twitter a lot, obviously, uh, called, uh, his username is snazzy labs. You may have already seen his video. He did a, a full on YouTube video and it was amazingly done. And he spoke exactly to this point. Like the, 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 this is not something Apple's burying the features that are user friendly and now has created something that is potentially user hostile in the iPhone 10. Uh, it's, it's, it marketing is taking over. It has taken over. Like, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, it's a coup d'etat. It's been a slow coup d'etat ever since the release of iOS 7. Uh, and there's actually, believe it or not, I'm going to invoke the name of Steve Jobs yet one more time. Steve Jobs actually has a video about this very thing, uh, talking about that's how products tend to fail. I'm paraphrasing. I, and I will do my best to find all these tweets and links and put them in the video description as I usually do for you. If I miss something, 
I apologize. Uh, there's a lot to throw out there, a lot for you to consider. I understand that. Uh, but Snazzy Labs, it, it was a great video. Uh, and he's he's someone who he seems to use a, a lot of products. So, I, I mean, I don't know him from Adam at this point, but I, I would trust what he says if only because he has the eye and he understands what he understands what makes a good device and why the user needs to be at the center or the focus of Put that device on, experience. Okay, can you get it on? It's a magnet, baby. Magnets, how do they work? Well, there's a new Star Wars science show that they're going to be releasing. We've got BB, who is this? BB-9E. BB-9E, that's right. We'll roll them around here later. We got it, the magnet attached. Attached. It attached, clasped, right on there. Vocabulary, it's for everybody. You were not expecting that, were you? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, thank you for listening. Th bless you. Uh, thank you for understanding, or at least trying to understand why I'm doing this. Thank you for, thank you for paying attention. Quite honestly, I, I feel, as I mentioned in, in, in the previous video, talking about it, the iPhone and it being expensive and costs, I really appreciate the fact that so many people are not just finally listening, but it's not vindicating, but I've been talking about this for years and I think it's bubbling up. And it's, it's just nice to see that it's actually, it's actually taking purchase in your soil. That was rather disgusting. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and wrap it up before I trip over anything else. The uh, uh, purchase in your soil, like getting pregnant. I'm impregnating you with knowledge. I'm, I'm, I'm finished for now. I love you. I appreciate you. And may the force... Be with you. May the flesh be with you. Always.